name is Chase Chatfield. I teach at the world famous Van Cleve Middle School in Van Cleve, Mississippi. If you're not sure where that is, it's in the United States. Whenever hurricanes hit the Gulf Coast, they usually mention Louisiana and the panhandle of Florida and Alabama. We're identified as the landmass. So we're in the southern part of the United States. And I also teach uh, integrated art. I'm the boys middle school soccer coach and I teach high school esports. When I started student teaching, my teacher really pushed relationships on me and told me exactly how important it was for me. Um, she wasn't the traditional teacher and I really learned a lot from her and I appreciated the fact that not only did she want me to be successful as a teacher, but she also wanted uh, me to feel loved by her and my teacher assistant that was in there, both of which I'm still in contact with today. And so that got me thinking when I was preparing for this today, you know, what were my, what was my schooling like growing up as a kid? Well, I grew up in a military family and I attended nine schools in six different states from the time I started kindergarten all the way through my senior year of high school. And the two schools that really stand out to me was Gentilly Terrace Elementary School in New Orleans, Louisiana. They, I was there for fourth and fifth grade, part of fifth grade and they really just accepted me for who I was and um, that you know I was a new kid it was a small charter school inside of a subdivision and I didn't live inside the subdivision and so being accepted there and treated as one of their own being invited to parties and being involved in sporting events and things that are in the school and announcements and different things like that really meant a lot to me and let me feel like I was you know part of a family and then my high school was Los Alamitos High School in California. Now that was one of three high schools that I attended and I did not graduate from there. And so that should speak to how important that school was to me. Um, you know, I could move from group to group during lunches and breaks and different things and just kind of, you know, all around be, be accepted versus some of the other schools that if I wasn't into certain things, then I was not, you know, accepted as a, as a student by, by other students. But I also, I remember the teachers and, you know, a common phrase that I've heard since I started teaching is that you may not remember what they said, but they will remember how you made them feel. And for me, I want to make sure that my students know that every single day that they are loved, whether they are told that or not, I, I feel that they need to hear it from, from me every single day. Um, when I start to start the year, uh, the first project that we do in class, my art class, is we draw a starfish. And of course, you know, we go through, you know, I don't know how to draw, I don't, I'm not good at it, et cetera, et cetera. And so the first thing we do is we draw a dot and then we do a huge round of applause because, you know, now you're an artist, you drew a dot, you did a good job on that. But the, the, the purpose behind the starfish comes from the star thrower that was written by Laura Nisling. And a, just a quick adaptation of it. It's a really short essay. It's about 16 you know, pages long. But the adaptation to it is that a man was walking along the beach and he saw a, a small child or person in the, in the distance. And as he approached, he noticed that this child was throwing starfish into the ocean. And he goes, hey, what are you doing? Well, the kid said, you know, well, the tide is out and the sun is out. If they, I don't help them, they're going to, you know, they're going to die. And the man looked up and down the beach and was like, well, there's hundreds here. There's absolutely no way that you can make a difference. And the small child picked up one more starfish, tossed it out into the water and said, well, I made a difference for that one. And I absolutely love that story because I may not be able to make a difference in every kid, every single day, every year that I teach, but I can make a difference in the kids that I try to make a difference in. So I really try to celebrate my kids um, as much as possible. And the way I help them get to know me at the start of the year is I make sure that I have as much like personal stuff out as possible. Like my desk is kind of cluttered and it drives some people crazy. But um, I think it's important that the students can come in and kind of observe who I am and things that I like simply by, you know, seeing that I've got, you know, little figurines, pop figurines from video games that, that I may play, or, you know, the, st the stock apple that sits there, 
um, some of my favorite animals, which happens to be a starfish and the other a kangaroo. But, you know, it opens up lines of communication without the awkwardness of, hey, what's your favorite color? Hey, what's your favorite thing, et cetera, et cetera. And so one of the things that I do is uh, I do a Kahoot selfie. And it really helps get the class go along. The kids love playing um, Kahoot. And uh, some of those basic topics that I cover are, uh, you know, like one question would be, what is your favorite blank? You know, your food, your water, water, <laughs> um, you know, your, your colors, your animals. Um, what was your first job? The number of children, the number of uh, or kinds of pets that you have, um, maybe where, you, where were you born? You know, like myself, I was born in Virginia and I teach in Mississippi. Some of my kids have never been outside of Mississippi. So that may be a conversation thing that we'll be able to start. Um, some advanced options. Some advanced options um, is if you're feeling a little brave, how about you put up your picture of what you look like in the grade that you happen to teach. And uh, I teach middle school and they, let me tell you, they are ruthless because my eighth grade picture is a button up shirt with a tie. I've got a jacket on like Miami Vice 80s style jacket and my hair is absolutely spiked. And yeah, they, they have a good time with that one. And, and so do I, because it lets them know that, you know, I'm, I'm human, I'm here. And, you know, we're just going to have as much fun as we can in class um, getting to know each other. But to get to know you a little bit more, we have a quick like four question Kahoot that um, Isabella is going to uh, run for us. And that's gonna help us get to know you a little better. And then I'll kind of show you on the website what, uh, where some of the templates are. That's what I was looking for. So Isabella, if you would get that rolling. Okay, can y'all see it? We got it. Here we yeah. go. Great. Yeah, so any time that you play a Kahoot over Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, any video conferencing tool, you make sure you share the screen so that your students can see the answers and the questions. And Chase will go over this more in detail. We'll play a Kahoot again later. Um, but I know I, I usually get lots of questions about how can you play a Kahoot live over video conferencing? And that's how you do it. So you share your screen and then players can join either with a second device or they can split their computer screen, right? And they can have sort of the, the Zoom with the Kahoot question and answers on one side of their computer screen. And then they can actually click the controller and you know choose their answers on the other. So that's a good tip. One of the things that, I, that I'm gonna actually do on Monday, um, I've been in school for, uh, or as of Monday, I would have been in school for two full weeks. And it gives me an opportunity to uh, hang out with my kids and talk with them and kind of feel them out a little bit as to who they are, what their quirks are and their pet peeves and who's the, uh, the, the helpers and who's the leave me aloneers, um, that type of stuff. It gives me some time to look through the QM folders and kind of understand their background. Um, but I play uh, a Kahoot that is uh, on publicly on my channel that's based off of Gary Chapman and Paul White's um, book, The Five Love Languages or the um, Language of Appreciation. And uh, it's only about 20 questions. This one happens to be geared towards like the middle school age. So the questions um, are kind of are a little childish, um, but uh, it helps me pick through uh, how to celebrate them. You know, um, you know, I walk around the room and kids are doing their best and trying to draw and, you know, I may, you know, pat them on the shoulder and say good job or see a kid that has like some amazing work and I lift it up to, you know, show them in the classroom. And I may not be speaking their appreciation language at all. You know, they may be very shy. And now that I brought that attention to them, they're not going to draw in class anymore. Um, and so uh, the, the five things that it covers are tangible gifts. And the key behind a tangible gift is it must be valued uh, by them to show that they are valued. So, you know, you have a kid always talking about food. Well, rest assured, if he wins a Kahoot, the kid's getting some Cheez-Its, something, you know. Um, 
Uh, it may be buying something from a fundraiser that they're doing, whether it's school related or not, you know, and just trying to support them, you know, when you can. Uh, acts of service would be the second one. Uh, asking what they need from you and following through with that, you know, it's like, well, if you ask them, well, how can I help? And then they tell you and you're like, no, nah, I can't do that. I mean, you're, you're burning part of your bridge there. So if they come up to you and they say, Hey, I need extra time to finish this project. You know, you think about that student and you, you give them a little bit extra time, you know, you make them, you know, quantify what they're doing and you know why they need it. But you, you work them through that to know that, Hey, school is probably the only place in the world that being on time is, has to be all the time. You know, I've got plenty of projects that I work on that I say I'm gonna get done on Tuesday and it's not till Thursday. You know, so that little bit of grace that kids are gonna need, especially now with distance learning and not knowing how do I get on Canvas? How do I get on, you know, whatever your, your learning management system is. And, you know, just showing that you, you know, you're gonna provide the help that they, they ask for, maybe not 100% the way they would need it, but at the very least the way they need it. Um, if they say, you know, hey, you know, Mr. Chatfield, in class, you know, we should try blankety blank, you know, figure out a way to work it in there. Uh, you know, if they want to draw certain things, then, uh, you know, have it part of your, your curriculum one day and say that, you know, this student, name them by name, suggested we do this. I thought it was a cool idea. And you kind of give them that spotlight a little bit. Um, appropriate contact, you know, you've got, uh, you know, alluding back to when I taught first grade, um, I had a sticker on the floor that was hug and a hand. It was a, a heart and it was a hand. So hug and a handshake. So my kids came in, they could decide, you know, if they want to give me a hug, I give them a hug. If they want to give me a handshake, give me a handshake. If they just want to go put their head down. They just want to put their head down. You know, so understanding that, you know, the, the appropriate touch, you know, high fives and fist bumps, you know, pats on the shoulder, that type of thing um, is, is important to, to our students. And then finally, you know, quality time giving them focused attention, you know, when they come up to your desk and they're talking to you and you're steadily typing or grading or, you know, working on something on your own, you're not, you're dividing your attention and that's not showing them the importance that they need. And so finding time to listen to their stories uh, on Mondays, the last five minutes of class, we have weekend story time, you know, and we, we share what we did. I put them on a timer. They got 90 seconds to say everything they did over the weekend. And then if you want to share, you can, if you don't, you don't. And it's a way to learn that, you know, this kid likes this music, you know, um, this one, uh, you know, likes this type of, uh, type of movies or this particular artist. And, you know, our school uses, uh, we have uniforms. So unfortunately them showing themselves and their personalities to their clothing isn't an option for us. So I have to provide time to hear about who they are and, uh, learn about the 15 pound bass they shot and the, that they caught and the, you know, 12 point buck. And then they have a rodeo and it, I didn't mention I'm in a rural community, you know, um, some of them learn how to drive over the weekend and they're 12, you know, because they have plenty of land to do it. So just learning about your kids and their interests and giving them the opportunity to share that, you know, without penalty and without taking away from instructional time is extremely important. Also going to games and performances, you know, um, I try to attend, at least one sporting event in each sport throughout the year um, from archery to bowling to football, baseball, basketball, volleyball, you know, a cheerleading competition, uh, robotics, you know, whatever our school is doing. And even sometimes outside of the school, we've got kids that, you know, do dance or um, compete in martial arts. Um, and so you find a way to support them the best way they can to know that, Hey, you're important. I may only be able to hit up one, but at least, um, at least you're there. And then finally, the last one is the uh, words of affirmation. You know, one of the things that in art, they always want to know if they're doing a good job. And my way of qualifying good job is that if you follow the directions, because skill wise, I've got some kids that draw a lot better than I do because they spend every ounce of their free time drawing. And so understanding that you're doing a good job regardless of what you think that you're doing is important. And it can be, you know, a, a mix between being public and one-on-one, -on -one. you know, again, knowing those kids that don't mind being singled out and those that just need to hear that they're appreciated and that they are, you know, loved. And so it can be 
simple things like writing a note on your on the test that they took or um, putting the example up on the board so folks can see it. You know, it varies from, you know, grade level. Everyone loves to see their name on the wall and the kids will walk by and point them out and say, look, there's my stuff, you know, and some kids don't like the attention. So we have to figure that out. Um, you know, it could be things like, you know, the kid that holds the door in the hallway every single day, you know, and letting them know we walk by and we say thank you, but then send, you know, singling them out and say, hey, I noticed you hold the door for everybody every single day. I think it's pretty awesome that you're, you know, selfless like that, you know, way to go. Good job. Um, you see kids picking up trash after, after break or in the hallway, they don't have to do any of that stuff. It's not their job, but they take pride in what they're, you know, in, in their school. And so that should, you know, be celebrated. Another really good thing also um, for your kids that love, you know, the, the public stuff is um, a positive office referral. And that's something if your school doesn't do is really awesome because, a lot of times the office, front office is about behavior issues and problems and struggles, you know, so you get called up there and then that teacher, because you may be uncomfortable with saying, you know, that type of stuff directly to a kid. So why not write up a positive office referral, send it up to the front office and then let them call them up there and say, hey, you know, Mr. Chatfield saw you picking up trash at break and thought you did an amazing job and he wanted to give you this, you know, positive office referral and um, allow your school to, you know, do what they, what they do, do with it. So, um, Isabella, were there any questions or anything like that that popped up that I missed? No, you've done a pretty great job of looking at the chat. Just mostly uh, kind of some um, questions about creating cahoots, some people who haven't done it before. And gotcha. I know you're going to kind of demo some stuff. Um, I think in a little bit, so maybe that'll that'll okay. kind of yeah. And we can um we can actually move over to that real quick. Yeah. And um we'll show where some of the the stuff is that that they can use. So um, you should be able to see my screen here. Um, I don't see the chat anymore. Um, so Isabella, if something happens, please let me know. Um, so on the screen here is your your desktop basically, and it's um, point and click. As I tell my kids, just mash buttons. You know, the worst thing that happens is that you can hit click this back button here. You just mash buttons. Um, Kahoot is free to everyone, but I strongly, strongly encourage you to uh, scrape up the funds, you know, raid the, the couch, change, whatever you got to do, and uh, upgrade to a pro or premium. Just a lot of the extra stuff that you're able to do with it that makes – uh, creating cahoots and engaging lessons a lot easier is uh, is really cool. So we're going to start by going over here to the create button and just click create. When the create happens, you have several options you can choose from. And these are slides that you can manipulate once you open up. But we'll focus today on the uh, get to know the teacher cahoot. So that if you're new to cahoot, you've never made one, this really gives you a template. Um, to start off with and just some basics. And as you do it and the brain starts flowing, the creative juices, then you can do it. Um, make sure that you, you know, change the names down here. So it's just some of the questions, you know, what is your teacher's name? Of course, that's you. Um, then, you know, what do they teach? And then where does your teacher come from? The pets that you have. I think Kahoot copied mine. <laughs> get some copyright stuff from them. All right. Um, does your teacher have any hobbies? You know, this is a great way to, you know, list all the hobbies, all the stuff that you love doing, you know, watching movies, you know, Netflix and, you know, video gaming, or if you crochet or if you're a painter, all that type of stuff. Um, it's a great way for them to get to know you. You know, where did you go on vacation during the summer? You know, there's a, a forget the name of the book, but there's a book out there that's, that was written for the elementary age that, you know, about kids freaking out when they see their teachers outside of school, because apparently that's the only place that we're allowed to go <laughs> sometimes. Um, then, you know, any uh, true or false type stuff. Um, one of the cahoots that I like to play with my students is we create a two truths and a lie. Um, and the kids say two things that are true about them and one thing that's not true. And the small community that I come from, uh, 
I don't know all of them because I've only been there for, you know, six years. So a lot of students or families are still very new to me. So the kids know who everyone is and what they've done. And they call them out when they're not telling the truth as well. But this also gives me a chance to kind of see more of their, their personalities and their interests and be able to use that and integrate it into my classroom and my interactions in the hallways. You know, and finally, are you excited about the new year? I mean, this, you know, this is really important right now, too, because, you know, some students don't have the connectivity that other students do at their homes. And being able to understand why they may not be excited about the new year gives you an opportunity to try to change that through your interactions with them, whether it be through Zoom or uh, uh, Teams or Meet or whatever your, you know, your video conferencing tool is, then you're, you're able to take advantage of that and um, build those relationships and have them feel successful even when they you know may be struggling because I don't know about you when I think about my older teachers um, not older teachers but the teachers that I had before I became a teacher like the ones that I felt believed in me and that were, were trying I tried to out try them all the time you know even if it was a class like I, I personally did not like English class but I had an English teacher in high school that knew I could do better and wanted me to do better. And instead of giving me the finger in the scowl, encouraged me through it all. And I struggled very hard to, um, you know, please her and to do better and live up to the expectation that she had for me. So as these questions are going through, um, you're also, if you look down here, you can add a question. When you click add, the types of questions come up. Like we've done the quiz, the true, false. Um, we've done the, you can type an answer in. It's not the word cloud, but it is a um, type of answer in. Then we have uh, our puzzle, which for like you history teachers in science, um, you can put things in chronological order. For lower elementary, it could be a spelling test that they do on there. Um, the poll we did, and then the slide is really, really cool. So say you have a Google slide or a PowerPoint presentation that you really, really like. You're like, well, how can I get it into a Kahoot? Well, by clicking import slides, it allows you to access that information and pull it over and it puts it up as the image. Um, plus, it's a time for kids to just take a brain break. There's no questions to answer. There's nothing to know. It's simply providing them information. Uh, it's a great transition slide as well, similar to like we do with our test where the questions five through six are going to cover, you know, this paragraph answer based on, um, you know, the paragraph above or the type of math that you happen to be working on. So those are really good. And then also spreadsheets. Um, that you can uh, use as well. The, if you decide to play one, so and after you create it, you have everything here. One of the newest things on Kahoot that I love is the drafts. So if I don't finish it, I don't have to save it. It doesn't have to be ready. It's still stuck and it's only visible to me. Um, and so I, I'm able to just click drafts and it goes back to it. But these here are all um, cahoots that I did on teachers this year. And teachers gave me, you know, interesting tidbits about them. And so as the kids come through my class, we go through their grade level and we go through the different people that are going to see on your campus that they may not run into on a regular basis because they're not teaching. So for me, that seemed to be uh, helpful. The kids love learning about it because you know, some of them, like I said, grew up in that town and know these folks that are related to them, but didn't realize that, you know, when they were in middle school, that they were homecoming queen or that they were involved in gymnastics or they taught themselves to drive at 13 and had four wrecks by 17. You know, just little things like that, that they can, you know, connect with. And, you know, that one question that you provide or that little bit of personal information that you provide could possibly be the string that that kid holds on to. It's like, yo, I want to go to class because I get to be with Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so um, because they're really cool because they blank, you know, whatever that string is to, for them. And, you know, I don't have to be that string for every kid for all, you know, almost 500, a little over 500 kids at my school, you know, but I still need to do my best to connect with all of them so that when I'm in the hallway, they know, hey, look, there's a teacher that believes in me, not just someone that's standing in the hallway like a centurion and motioning everyone through and trying to keep the volume down and masks on and, you know, things along that line. 
and just being able to connect on a more personal and uh, deeper level. Um, report wise is really awesome. It holds all reports that you have. Um, if I click the date button, it should jump back for me. Keyword is should. There it is. So I can look all the way back to October 30th, 2015 at 841 in the morning, two step equations, the very first Kahoot I ever played. I had five kids in that advanced math class. So um, it also categorizes it in live games and in challenges, um, which I believe we'll, we'll go over in, in a little bit. So uh, Isabel, is there anything that you'd like to, to add to that? No, so far so good. Okay. Um, yeah, chat, chat's going well. Someone actually just brought up two-factor verification, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Uh, uh, but yes, so Chase might talk about this. I don't know if, Chase, if you decided that you want to play, when we play, if you're going to turn on the two-factor uh, verification, but it's basically when you join the game, you put in the pin code, then you also have to put in a little combination of like... So I uh, think what would be good is if we did do that, that way they can experience the sometimes frustration of getting it done and the amount of time that it provides so that they can understand, you know, how to incorporate that into each classroom. Um, and if it's something that they feel they need to use based on, you know, their students or the objective of the Kahoot, I think that'd be a really cool thing to do. Yeah. All right. So far, so good. So I see Marjorie asked about seeing those math games. Well, I'll tell you, you probably don't want to see some of my early ones because they were really specific to my class. So like the questions that I would ask them were based on stuff that we knew um, and we had talked about like verbiage. So they're not really like on the professional level of like, if you opened it up, yes, I don't have to do any work. Um, but Kahoot does have this awesome academy that they've created and launched this uh, summer. And those are verified educators um, and businesses and um, I saw earlier someone was talking about uh, SEL and um, they have, uh, those have recently been launched as well. Um, and all of those are checked and verified and they're looked and they're really, really high quality. Um, even though they are checked and verified, any Kahoot that you decide to duplicate, always double check. Um, I don't care how many times I look at stuff, uh, I still did something wrong and someone else is gonna find it just like that. I teach middle school and I'm reminded that of every single day of something. And so uh, gratefully too. So um, also with uh, SPED K1 and three, you know, that's, it depends on what you're trying to get out of it. You know, you can um, teach them how it's supposed to be used. It'll help them uh, be a little more self-independent. Uh, and, you know, you can limit the questions. You can have a two question Kahoot. It could be the start of the day when they come in, how are you feeling? Great, not great. You know, each um, Kahoot can, uh, or each question can just cover one thing and allow them to answer those type of stuff. Um, it can be used for reinforcement um, inside the reports, which you will may, maybe we can bring that up a little bit later, but uh, the reports are, are pretty in depth for you to be able to uh, reassign and see what questions were missed so they can, uh, um, push instruction, you know, if you do a Monday morning, this is what we're learning this week, show me what you know type of deal. And it lets you know where you can start teaching at the beginning, middle, the end, or, you know, if you're all over the place. So it really um, uh, allows you to, I shouldn't have read the checks, I lost my train of thought. So we'll just skip that. If it comes back, I may just throw it in, you never know. <laughs> so, <laughs> the chat's dangerous. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so let's see here. Do you want me to try to pull up a, an old report or something and see? If I can just kind of show that. Okay, so we'll do that again. I'll hit the share. All right, so let me find one of the, um, the, the bigger ones. Oh, this is gonna be so embarrassing, but it's worth it. All right, so I'm gonna open this one. So this is what the report's gonna look like. It's gonna generate it. Um, and so obviously we did not do well on this one. Um, so it says practice makes perfect. It shows me 5%. Um, there's no telling, you know, what happened in, in this case. Um, but it shows you number of players, number of questions, um, and time frame. This is from 2015. So the information actually may not have transferred over very well. 
Um, it'll show you who needs help in the sense that if they answered questions and they answered all of them, but they answered up incorrectly, this helps you do that. And then finally, the didn't finish, it could be from a connectivity issue to a didn't answer all, didn't answer the questions in the amount of time. And ultimately the difficult questions right here, it will isolate questions that the majority of your students missed. So you know where your reteach needs to be. Um, you can look up, so I'm not gonna click that. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and click that. I have faith. All right, okay. So it shows the rank, shows final scores. It looks like we just answered one question there. Um, it shows the questions here. Yeah, it looks like only one question. So maybe a poor example, but on the fly, that's what I have, I apologize. So here are some of the questions that kind of lets us know, you know, the purpose of unit rate, complex fraction, you know, it's kind of information. Um, you can click on them individually. It'll give you the, the, the image there of what your question was, responses, and where the answers came from. So uh, the reports are very in depth. You can also export them if you'd like and under your reporting options. So you can print them, you can uh, delete them if you want to, you can download the report, which will put it into a uh, Excel file, which you can send over to Sheets if you would like. Um, and you can really dive into it. This is how the Kahoot that I do on their um, appreciation languages. Um, I download that and then I grade that based off the, the scores that are in the back of uh, their book and then I can categorize which kid falls into which appreciation language and know how to celebrate everyone in class a little bit better. So let's, uh, when we do Kahoot, we have to uh, finish with a Kahoot. So we will, we will play a uh, quick Kahoot. So go ahead and get your stuff up um, real quick. And then I will pull up the Kahoot again and we will we'll play that. Isabella, um, prize wise, Ooh. I guess the top three, if you make the podium, take a screenshot of your phone and then email it to uh, Isabella. She'll probably put her email in the chat or you probably already have it because you've got the um, Kahoot invite. Um, uh, but let's go ahead and pull that up. All right, so when we go to play, you have two options here. You can either teach, which means you're in front of them. So this is the option you would choose if you're distance learning and you're gonna host it live, either in your classroom or on your uh, video conferencing tool. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open and close just so that you can, uh, you can see. So if I do a sign, this is a challenge. I can set the dates. Um, if I want to grade it, so to speak, I can uh, turn the timer off so they have enough time, but if I just wanna see what they know, you can do that. Um, personalized learning um, allows them to go back and practice the stuff they got wrong. Um, just that re repetition um, is really important. The randomized or order, I do that from class to class. I don't really worry about it too much with assigning challenges. Nickname generator, they have three spins and it's an adjective followed by an animal. Um, that helps keep uh, the naming uh, safe. So I'll cancel that. So the teaching wise, this is, um, you can choose to, if you're doing the classic, which is one-to-one -one, or your team mode. Um, a lot of times it looks like this and you're just like, oh, I'm just gonna play. So uh, if we look at the game options, personalized learning can be turned on and off as well. Um, friendly name generator, we're gonna turn that off because we're all adults here and we know we're on record. Lobby music. Um, there's a lot of cool music here. You can go old school with Halloween and Christmas. My favorite one, honestly, is uh, going to be disco. So I'm going to click that one. The uh, two-step join, you'll see what that is. And um, all right. Good luck, everybody. Love the disco music. No, now, in my... There we go.
<laughs> it was much faster with the, the two-step this time. <laughs> Chase and I practiced yesterday and <laughs> it's tough at first to kind of figure out, okay, like which tiles, you know, cap them. But Chase, so what's the purpose of the, the two-step? What does it help with? So the great thing with a two-step is it protects the integrity of your game. Um, unfortunately, with technology, there's always around ways around technology. And so that prevents someone that's not involved with your, um, your video conference or sitting in your classroom to be able to join in and, as we call in the gaming world, troll your class with some random name or uh, mess up the standings for that class competition. Another, um, another really good thing to do is that once you know all of your people are in, is this button over here is the lock button. And that absolutely shuts it down. So it, it kills uh, connectivity. Oh, there it is. I'm not going to lock you out, but we're going to get started, everybody. So when I go to create, and I'm just going to create a new Kahoot. If I look here, I have a uh, question bank. So if I put, you know, where is um, New York? it pops up tons of questions and I can just scroll through and find the question that I want. It may be the image that I like, you know, and but I still want to make sure that I check uh, and it, it, you know, shows who used it, how many plays it's got, that type of stuff. So it kind of quantif you know, qualifies what the question was. Um, you can go through the image library and type in, you know, city. It's run by Getty, you know, so it's like, oh, that's great, but I want to add, you know, I want skyscrapers. So it separates that and allows you to, you know, kind of go through that stuff. So we'll just pick that one. Um, say I have a really easy question, 20 seconds. Tell me what you know right now. Um, for you, like math and English and science folks that may take a little bit, have more information to, to work on, you have up to 240 seconds to uh, solve a problem. Um, Point-wise, you can go from zero to full-blown double points. And when the double points pop up, it says two times points, and it really does uh, – you know, excite them. Um, being able to do a multi-select. So uh, a lot of our state testing and stuff is choose all that apply. This helps you get to choose all that apply. And um, another cool thing is that you can add a picture here if you wanted to and pull up a picture of peas. Why not? We'll do peas. All right. And so now you, you have being able to picture peas. So Maybe some of your, uh, you know, your SPED students or your, uh, your second language learners um, that can assist them. You can also, if you want this to be a context clue uh, for, for your group, you can choose, you know, which one it is. And so as the question goes, it takes time through the question. And um, depending on how fast you want it to happen, I mean, it can be three by three. So it's a fairly quick reveal. Or if you really want to reward those that are trying, you know, you got the, the big picture right there. And again, down here, you can import slides or spreadsheets from wherever you're, uh, wherever you're at. You can also, um, if I decide to do the challenge and I create this, when the screen pops up, I get to choose where I send it to. And these are all direct links. So as soon as you click on a button, you have your Google Classroom choose a class, right? So I have, I have that one. It works for Facebook, Twitter, uh, Remind, and um, your, your Microsoft Teams. Uh, that's direct links. Um, someone asked earlier, Canvas, it's a different um, learning management system um, that's new to me. I'm just learning it now, so um, it's not connected, unfortunately, with Kahoot just yet, but you can provide a link right here by copying the URL and putting it in there for those of you that do use Canvas. And then just the information it provides is when does it start, when does it end, and um, say you mess the date up. That's fine. I'm going to change the deadline, and um, I want everyone to stop at 2 in the afternoon because they get out of school, say, boom, and, uh, and you're there. So I want to thank you, everyone here for spending some time with me. I, I appreciate, uh, you know, some of y'all are early in the morning. Some of you are finishing up your school day. Some are probably in part of your school day. Uh, wherever you are, you know that uh, you are loved and appreciated. 
and that um, staying proud to be a teacher, no matter how attacked we seem to be feeling right now, and know that um, there are people out there such as Kahoot, and uh, there's parents and administrators and community leaders that are supporting you 110%, and they want you to be successful because we're responsible for our next generation and for that workforce and those uh, group of folks. And um, I'll, I will close with this before we go in the Q&A. Um, a, a teaching mentor of mine uh, once said that uh, if your presence doesn't make an impact, your absence won't make a difference. Every day, tell a kid that you love them because it may be the only time they hear it. I appreciate your time. Love each and every one of you for giving me some of your time. I hope you enjoyed everything that uh, we had to show and always reach out um, on social media or you can reach out directly to me um, if you uh, have any help or need any ideas. So those of y'all that have to bounce, uh, we'll miss you. Thank you for your time. Um, I'll definitely stick around for a little bit for some Q and A and uh, talk from my mind and probably more of my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And Chase, what's your Twitter handle so people can follow you? Oh, yes. Um, so my, my Twitter handle is at Master Blaster. I'm Chase Chatfield. Uh, enjoy your year, however it's going to look for you, whether it's in person or hybrid or distance learning. Always love your students and make sure that they know it as well. God bless. Enjoy your new year. <laughs>